Hello and welcome back to my studio. For this film I'm going to do a small 5x7 pen and watercolour sketch of a very famous Lake District fell and it's called Great Gable and it features in Wainwright's Pictorial Guides, the seventh guide on the Western Fells. It's a fine looking fell, I know it really well, I've climbed it several times and this is just a profile view that I want to do as part of my Lakeland 365 series. So let's get started. Now in the pictorial guide, Wainwright dedicated 28 pages to Great Gable and he did 21 illustrations for different aspects of the fell. His initial sketch is a view of Great Gable from the far end of Waspwater. And it's obviously an area that I know really well because I studied it for the Wainwrights in colour. And here are my 21 illustrations and the comparison of his view. Now for the painting I'm about to do, I'm going to use my own photograph. It's one that I took on one of the days I was out in Wastel. And it's this view from near Wastel Head, looking towards the mighty Great Gable with Great Napes there, and then the view past the farm up towards the hill. I've already done a bit of preparatory work, and that's a small watercolour thumbnail sketch, which I'll use as a colour reference. And then in here is what I call a value drawing just done in pen and pencil to get an idea of the depth of the tones which I need to put over in the final work. So let's get on with the painting. To begin we need obviously the, the paints, my watercolour palette and then a small piece of paper. This is a piece of 90 gram Bockingford paper with a notch surface and the paint and the pen should work really well on this surface. So what I'm going to do is do the initial drawing. Now this is a pen in watercolour. Some people apply the pen first with the watercolour over and I prefer to use the watercolour and then the pen later. It's just a personal preference and there's no rules about the right way and wrong way of doing it. So I'll do a drawing very lightly at first. I'm looking just to very simply put the basic shape of the fell into the drawing first, just so I get an idea of the positioning of certain elements of the mountainside. And that's the pencil outline done. Next thing is to get on and apply the paint. I've got my paints, my water, a uh, couple of tissues, the brushes, and then my references to, all to hand. I've tilted the easel just a bit more um, horizontal so that when I apply the sky, the paint doesn't run too much. And that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna do a, um, a just a very simple um, sky to give a nice bit of color behind the mountain. For that, in this picture, I'm just going to Mix a bit of cobalt blue with water. And what I'm going to do is just put some clean water, not too much of it, but just a bit of clean water to dampen the sky area of the paper. And just dampen it so that the paint isn't applied just too dry and then I'll drop some colour into that and the water helps it just bleed a little bit so that we're getting soft edges to some sky. You can see in the reference photograph there are clouds but I'm not following that exactly I'm just applying the paint And it's just giving a little bit of interest to the sky. And 
and it's as simple as that. Remembering of course that whenever you apply watercolour paint onto paper it always dries a lot lighter than when you apply it. So this will come out really quite pale which is what I'm after. I don't want it to be too strong in this picture. Now the sky is always darker towards the top, pale towards the horizon. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more colour into the higher points of the sky. And they'll, because the paper's still wet, they'll just bleed in and disperse, giving a hint of an idea of the clouds. And don't fiddle. I'm just going to leave that to dry. Now that the sky's dried, I'm going to tilt the easel back down a bit to give it more of a slope so I can look at it better. And then we'll go on to the mountain itself. Now I love the way that the sunlight is catching just the very top of the mountain. This isn't going to be easy to portray in watercolour and especially on such a small scale. But uh, we'll mix a few colours first and then I'll use a little piece of paper which I have here, especially for the purpose, which is just like a, a small piece of watercolour paper that I can use to test the colour of the paint before I apply it to the actual sketch. And the idea, like most watercolour paintings, is to mix a decent amount of paint first because you don't want to try and remix paint while you're halfway through a wash because you'll get different tones and values of that colour. For this I think we'll go for some cadmium yellow. And for a bit of warmth, some burnt sienna. Just mix that in. It takes away some of the brightness of the yellow and warms it up with the reddish hue of the burnt sienna. And we just try a little bit that on the pad. That's a nice warm colour. I'm not looking for an exact match, but uh, getting close will be handy. And then further down the mountain, the actual scree runs are red. They, uh, in reality, it's not just the photograph, in reality the scree runs down these um, places that are called Hell Gate, as they come down off um, the Great Napes, are, are very red in colour. So we've got to try and put that into the colour on the side of the mountain. So what I'll do is, I'll do another mixture of that, add in more of the red. The burnt sienna. That needs to be a bit more to the red, so I'm going to try a bit of Zarin Crimson in it. Just a little bit to start with and see how that looks. It's definitely looking better. And then on the fell side, there's some uh, grass coming through and I'm going to give a hint of that. It's not very strong, the first bit of grass before the bracken, and I'll just do a mixture of that. Get these mixtures ready before I just do a straightforward single application there. A bit of cadmium yellow again, that means there's a bit of colour coordination between these three colours. And a little bit of the cobalt. And that's a lovely soft green. And I think we're about ready to go. So the light yellow at the top coming down to the darker shaded um, colours of the mountainside and then little patches of the green on the on the fell side.
a little hint of it on the false side in the distance. Now bring in some of that warmer colour. bigger brush Just using that same green to come in and put a bit of colour on the green of the fields. Careful not to go where the walls are. And then just on the edge of the lane. Just a little hint of that colour in there.
Now we're going to add a bit of colour into the the walls. These are quite pink, reflecting the colour that's on the top of the fell there. So just give them a light coat to start with. Trying to leave a bit of the white as the top edge to the walls. And of course the houses are built with the same material, so we'll put a bit of colour on them. some of that pinkish coloured paint to take away the stark colour of the lane. Use a fairly dry brush here because there's some, there's some very pale areas there. Blend a bit of that in. You see at this time I'm not actually trying to draw all the stones. That's not the way it's going to work. So we've got a nice tone now to the, the painting. You need to put more depth into the trees and then the bracken which is much darker. Leave that to dry for a little bit. really quite subtle on the lighter side of the mountain.
I've added most of the paint that I need to for now to get the um, colour scheme going. So the next job I'm going to do is work with the pen. And for this I'm going to use one of these. It's a, a th very thin pen, it's a 0.1 uh, uni pen, fine line, which is a waterproof ink. And I'm going to use that very thin for the mountain because it's in the distance. I don't want it to be too outlined with a, with a thicker pen. So I'm going to use that first. I'll move the paints out of the way and we'll get on and do that. For a subject that's quite away in the distance, like this one, the idea is to give the impression of the detail and not to draw every single crag and feature of the fell. As long as, as, long as you get the character of the fell, that's the main task. It should be there so that people who know the area, recognise the mountain, will recognise it as a great gable with most of the prominent features reasonably correct. Now I'll move on to the thicker pen. It's only slightly thicker. This is a 0.2. And here I'm going around the areas where the paint has a, a bit of a definite edge. And that's why I like to put the colour on first and then do the pen, or some of the pen, almost as a, an addition. There's no hard and fast rule. There's plenty of people with the different styles of doing it. And do it because you enjoy it. And if people like what you do, all the better. I do enjoy different styles and methods of painting and producing work and the pen and wash is a little bit different for me. I'm not saying I'm an expert at it. I enjoy doing it. I think it comes out with a lovely style. It's not to everyone's taste of course but I just like challenging myself every now and then and pen and wash 
is something that I've enjoyed doing over the last year or so really. There's something quite um, graphic in the design of it and the way it comes together. You'll certainly see on YouTube plenty of people who uh, do pen and wash and certainly in different style and a lot of them much better than me. I thought I'd just put this film together to show you the way I do it. But if you like what I do and you'd like to see more of these then now's a good time to just click that like button and uh, if you haven't done so already then subscribe and maybe I'll do some more of these in the near future and why not give it a go yourself it's I was going to say it's not difficult it's easy if you've had a bit of experience doing it but it's a little bit of a challenge and um, everyone can pick up a pen so give it a go I think the most thing about doing pen and wash, you're not looking for, well, the way I do it, not necessarily looking for pinpoint accuracy, just basically to put marks down on paper that represent something. Here it's Great Gable, but you could do buildings, keep it simple. And I actually think sometimes the simpler the scene, the more effective it is. But as I say, I'm just experimenting really with, with pen and wash myself. I'm no real expert, but like most things in life, the more you do it, hopefully the better you get. But don't give up. When it comes to things like these dry stone walls, it, you'd be ruining the effect if you tried to draw every stone. You're trying to give the impression of a dry stone wall with these big round boulders. So don't go for every stone, just do a flavor of stones, maybe in a certain section of the wall. People's brains will tell them that's a dry stone wall. Doing every stone is just very frustrating. Now Wainwright, when he did this, he was using very, very fine dip pens and ink. If you look at the detail in his drawings, he did go for almost every single detail, every tree in the landscape, every dry stone wall, all those elements. But that's the way he did it. Everyone's got a different style. We use these days these sort of felt pens where, as I say, Wainwright, he was just using a dip pen with a pot of ink. And the remarkable thing is that if you look at his drawings in the pictorial guides, they're actually the size that he did them. They weren't bigger and reduced down to fit the book. They were exactly that size. Remarkable work. One thing about doing this, I don't think you'll be able to pick it up on this film, but by applying the paint first and then bringing out the pen, I can see where I've put the paint and it's dried and it's almost formed those shapes of the stones so that I can go around that now with the pen because there's almost a shadow there on and a, a dimension to those stones in the paint. If I did the pen first, I'd have to make those shadows fit the drawing of the pen. I prefer this way, but each to their own and Others will come up as to why you should do it with doing the pen first and then the paint. But this is the way I like to do it. That's the pen work finished. Well, for now, it's the pen work finished. And what I'm gonna do, because I've now defined the shapes a bit better, I'm gonna add in some of the shadows that you can see here in the top. I don't draw the shadows in with a pen because they're sort of, they're not a fixed thing, whereas the crags are, and I think it looks better. Me personally, that if you paint the shadows in, it looks more realistic and gives a better depth. So for this, I'm gonna do a 
a mixture, not too strong, but a mixture of ultramarine blue with some alizarin crimson. So that gives a warm shadow. And using and using quite a fine paintbrush, as I say. Just going to put a few strokes of the shadow in. Almost like a a glaze. And just that little hint of colour, that shadow should give a more of a three-dimensional look to the fell. If anything, you're really just drawing with the, the brush. Just going to mute it down a bit. I'll add a little bit more yellow in to warm it. And then just amongst the walls. Just try and give a little bit more depth to some of the walls. I'm not painting the stones here. I'm just adding in a shadow onto it, onto the walls, onto the the barns at the back. That just settles them down a bit. Just a few dashes here to give more shadow because now that I've added the shape to the stones in, I know where to apply the paint to give the stones more of a three-dimensional look with shadows. And a bit into the vegetation to give it a bit more shape. add a bit more of that nice warm colour into the lane. Just one or two shadows need bringing out there because this is a place called Great Napes, Great Pl Climbers Playground and that has a real set of crags on it, very famous climbing ground. One thing I have noticed, I had not put the tree shape in here that I wanted. Into the trees I'm going to put some really nice rich dark greens in there just to give those just that extra dimension and give it the value because they're nearer. The shadow colours will be stronger than any shadows on the fell and this will hopefully give it a bit more of a three-dimensional look all around. And there we are. I'm quite pleased with that. It's um, come out well, the colours are nice, it's a good effect of the evening light on the on the fell and it's got the shape. People would see that and say that's Great Gable. The lane leading through, the shape of the, the barn, even though I've kept it really quite subtle in amongst the trees there, dry stone walls and then the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'll let this dry, I'll take it up to the workshop, I'll make a frame for it and I'll show it to you in a minute. And we're back. That's the one good thing about having all that framing equipment is that if I do a painting or a sketch, I can take it up to the workshop, have a frame for it, make it in half an hour and then come back. And this is it. This is a small 10 by 12 frame that goes around that pen and wash sketch of Great Gable. I'm really pleased with that. I think it's come out really well. Now this is just one of a series of paintings of the Lakeland Fells which I'll be doing in the near future. I won't be filming them all, I'll just film one or two, maybe the more popular ones and maybe them in different seasons. I have other paintings to do, I've got a lot of watercolour paintings and oil paintings to do before we do the summer season of shows and events around the north of England. But as I said earlier, 
If you've enjoyed this film, why not click the like button? And if you subscribe, then you will see which films I post up in the near future. But as ever, thanks for watching.